I grew up with my mama and my sister, and I never had my father in my life. It was a little bit harder because I can see other people, their fathers, learning things that I should have knew, and I kind of have a I had a jealousy towards that. I mean, it's a backwards place. So there's a river that separates North Greenwood, South Greenwood, and uh, North Greenwood's predominantly white, South Greenwood's pre predominantly black. You know, 98 percent of the students that go to the public school are uh, minority, and then probably. You know, 90% of the students go to private school are, are white. I mean, churches are very segregated, uh, and there's not a whole lot of um, crossovers. My first year here was pretty hard, and I didn't think I was like, I wasn't gonna come back next year just going through it, the motions and seeing things. And I was like, I, I need this school. Like it wasn't a choice. It was like something I know I needed. I feel like today I've learned way more than I would have known if I just went to a public school because they don't really teach about God there. In the academics, Coach Howard just pushes that. He wants us to excel. He wants us to be something in this world and not just be the uh, stereotypes that everybody thinks that we are, black people. That black people, can't really do anything really good. If they don't try or anything, that they just drop out of school, get on the streets. They don't take care of their kids. We're yeah. not leaders. Yeah. Stuff like that. There's a major lack of male leadership, specifically in the black community. I mean, I would even say just across all boards. Um, but definitely in the black community. And, and so if we're gonna change uh, the way Greenwood operates, because you know, 60, 70% of the people that live in Greenwood are black, we need to equip young black men to, to rise up and, and be the men that God created them to be. So my plans are tonight, is just go out, cook dinner with the pastor at his house. He came and talked to me one, one day. He's like, hey, we, he's like, you're my pastor. Like, I wanna hang out with you. I was like, I think we can swing that. So we're going to cook a Hollandale sauce with a homemade pasta. The, the pastor who he's going to eat dinner with tonight um, has, has taken him under his wing. It's interesting because Mississippi ranks last in a lot of things, but there's one thing that they rank first in, and that's giving, just in terms of giving. They're number one in the United States in giving. There's been a tremendous amount of financial support for what they're trying to do. The, the, probably the bigger need is the need for mentorships and people's time. You can't just write a check and be done, and that's, that's I think, where the big disconnect and where Delta Streets has really been good is they've been a good bridge to help connect the people with the ministry. Being at this school, I feel like people from the north side is like really helping out with this school because they know what's going on on the south side and they want to make that bridge so it can be crossed both ways and like those two bridges can gap. The challenge of operating a Christian organization in our world today can be very volatile because the the media would not have, they would not be a big fan of what we do here. Now when we say the word success, uh, it might not look to the world's eyes like they're successful, but if, if you love your wife and discipline your kids and uh, stay committed in that relationship, uh, it might look tough and hard and might not look like others if you can just get out of your marriage, but uh, I mean, we would tell these guys that's super successful. If they, if they follow through with what we, what we teach them here, uh, it should go well with them wherever they go. Plan on graduating, going to Mississippi State, and later becoming a pharmacist. Yeah, I plan to go to um, Mississippi State, try to be a doctor. I know it's going to be a long road, a lot of studying, everything, and hope it goes well for me. I just want I want to be able to move my family across the bridge. You know what I'm saying? Our ultimate goal is to make sure these guys understand who Jesus is and um, what he's done for them and how that can radically transform their life uh, and bring them hope um, in, in a sense where, you know, oftentimes there seems to be no hope. I, I say my faith gives me a uh, strength 
to to overcome things because I know that I, I have somebody who loves me that gives you so much strength knowing that and be able to just get up in the morning and say, hey, I know what I need to do. I know I, I, I can do it because I have that I have that faith in somebody. It's like we're sitting in these chairs, we, just, we know they're gonna hold us. I know God will hold me as well.